from this conference really, it, it, there's been lots of talks about um, the breadth of genetic abnormalities that are present both in paediatric ALL and also adult ALL. They are different, but there is some overlap. And the work that we've been presenting are the results of the UCAL 14 trial, where we have screened the entire trial for a number of genetic abnormalities. Um, there are three types of abnormalities that we screened for. One were the abnormalities that we knew in advance were associated with high risk. There were another group of abnormalities that have been identified or discovered since the start of that trial, and we wanted to go back and look at those, um, the frequency and prognostic impact of those abnormalities. And then a third set are what we call uh, copy number alterations. That's a gain and loss of individual genes. And we found that the patients that we knew had high risk abnormalities at the start of the trial, some of those did have a better outcome as a, being a, result, uh, as a result of being treated with more intensive chemotherapy, uh, but some of them still remain stubbornly poor risk. The group of patients uh, received the more targeted therapy had a significantly improved outcome. And then the novel abnormalities, and this was a real interest from uh, the study that I was presenting, is we managed to kind of split the kind of unknown group into a group that had a very poor outcome and a group that had a significantly better outcome and possibly a very small group that had a very good outcome. Um, and the way that we're going to use this information now is we're now going to be able to build a much more detailed algorithm in order to be able to assign patients in the next clinical trial to either standard chemotherapy um, transplant or alternative uh, methods of therapy and that's yet to be decided that's what will be decided by the my clinical colleagues so what we're really doing is providing them with a baseline of information um, in order to make more informed decisions about how to risk stratify patients on a personal level I, I think one of the big things that are coming through now is uh, genetic predisposition to leukemia and there have been a number of papers that have really opened the door in, into that field. Uh, some of them are very big American studies on paediatric ALL but there's also been some very focused ones, particularly one from Finland that identified a very high incidence of kind of germline predisposition. So we're not talking about being able to use this necessarily in the clinic immediately, but again, it's building up that body of information that we can pass on to our clinical colleagues and help them to make the most informed decision in the future. So for me, that was a very interesting uh, perspective.